Hey Fight Fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps with Boxing Social in partnership with Forged Irish Stout, FreeBets.com, ready to fight and Empire Fight Store. And I'm joined now with the one and only Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, it's good to see you. you it has you. been a little while since I've actually like, interviewed you. Right, it yeah. has been a while. I know you're... Uh you're out and about doing uh, bigger and better things, so uh, congratulations. I wouldn't say better, but <laughs> definitely it's a cha nice change it's of pace. It's a nice change of pace, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. Um, obviously, we got Virgil Ortiz making his return. Yeah. Uh, he seems in really, really good spirits. I know that he's had a hard time mentally sort of adjusting with all the the health issues that he's had, sure. Um, sure. the shortcomings that he can't even control. You know, what right. what's the synergy been like with, with you guys? Well, look, I mean, we're, we're extremely proud and happy that he's back. Uh, we're proud that Virgil is healthy and we feel that Virgil has so much to offer to the boxing world. Uh, he has so much to offer, um, you know, in terms of fighting the best fights, giving the fight fans a lot of entertainment. I mean, Virgil Ortiz, 19-0, and 19 knockouts you never know in what round that fight's going to end. So that's why people are, I guess, urging for him to just, you know, step back into the yeah. ring. So Saturday night is exciting for the whole boxing world. There's also, I would imagine, a, a, a bit of pressure because there are a lot of big names that you can match him sure, up with at sure. 154, yeah. um, one of which is obviously Terrence Crawford because there has okay. been a lot of mention with his name at 147. Sure. Um, is that obviously something that you guys would love to, to make happen? Yeah, look, I mean, the way I see it, the 154-pound weight class is um, is going to be one of the hottest divisions out there. Mm -hmm. There's so many hot divisions right now in boxing. Um, unlike unlike the days when I was fighting, there was maybe one hot division or maybe two. Mm -hmm. But now you have three, four, five hot divisions. Um, you have uh, uh, fighters who are who are demanding um, who are demanding the best fights uh, to be made. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you you know you get the recognition, you become world champion, you become a star. So it's it's a beautiful thing what's happening to boxing now. But 154, the top top dog in boxing today has to be Crawford, and everybody obviously wants to gun for Crawford. He's the guy to beat. He's the best in in the world, um, the pound for pound champion. So guess what? Uh, Virgil Ortiz at 154 would be a terrific fight down the line. Um, you know, Virgil Ortiz has to come back, get his, uh, get his uh, uh, the timing back and see how he feels. But I strongly feel this opponent Saturday night is not, in, uh, not a walk in the park. It's, yeah, it's a no. tough fight, but it's going to be an explosive fight. Uh, but I can see Virgil Ortiz getting a great knockout and make a statement. So, um, yeah, we can't wait for him. We, we seriously are, 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 um, are just patiently waiting for his, uh, for his return Saturday night on the zone. Uh, O'Hara Davies, congratulations on that signing. Yeah. He's a bit of a character. He's, he his Spanish was really good. Do you know where he said he learned it? it was no. Duolingo, that app. No way. <laughs> that is hilarious. I said, well, I got Duolingo. I funny. didn't speak Spanish yeah. like that. Well, it's, it's, I mean, I think he speaks better Spanish than I do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but he's, um, yeah, we're, we're super excited for him. Yeah. Uh, I think that... Um, I think that O'Hara Davis is one of those fighters that um, that you know people can't sleep on. He um, a lot of people don't really know him here, his style, his fighting abilities. But once he once he showcases his talent on the zone here from Las Vegas, people are gonna know his name, and people are gonna know who he wants next. And uh, so you know what's funny? We ran into Raleigh. Okay. So yesterday, last night, I was here interviewing O'Hara, and we're walking. And I'm like, shit, you got to be joking me right now. <laughs> and Raleigh's at the at the ice cream stand over there, right. and he was he was like, hey, why are you why are you avoiding me or something like that? Yeah, so it right. was it was interesting. It is interesting. I mean, look, look, I, I love Roly. I really do yeah. because he's he's actually a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a funny kid, and um, you know he comes across like a little arrogant, whatever people might say, but. I think he's just a good, funny kid. Um, misunderstood a bit, yeah. Misunderstood yeah. just a bit, but it's fine. It's okay. He's a character in boxing. I mean, we need more characters like that, right? Yeah. But um, look, I think there's great fights to be made with Rollies, uh, with O'Hara Davis. So, I mean, first things first is that we, we, uh, you know, O'Hara Davis is uh, is the mandatory. He's uh, right there, uh, and he's fighting Barroso, who uh, gave 
gave uh, 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 Rollies a, a run for his for his money. So I, I strongly feel that this fight here, the winner, should definitely have a shot at fighting Rollies. No ifs or buts. If that doesn't happen, then Rollies should vacate his title. Right. Automatic. Right. Well, I was asking her about that. Like, what's plan B? You know, like, if, if you can't, if, if that isn't going to be the right. next fight for him, what are you looking at? I did ask about Ryan Garcia. He said it's, I, I don't know if it was like a year or two ago, but he was offered um, a Ryan Garcia fight in the past. So is that something that you would obviously like to see? Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're, we're heavy on the 140-pound division right yeah. now. And, um, you know, we have some, some nice surprises coming up uh, in the near future and signees that, uh, that we're talking to. But, you know, we strongly feel that, um, that Ryan Garcia, O'Hara Davis, Barboso, um, you know, and, and, and Rollies and all those fighters are, uh, are, can, you know, literally do a, a round robin against each other and literally create some exciting fights, yeah. some exciting times for boxing. So, um, yeah, we have to wait and see what happens Saturday night, and then we'll take it from there. But, look, in terms of Ryan Garcia... Um, there is chatter right now. It's only chatter uh, of fighting Haney. Mm-hmm. In Saudi, I'm hearing. Well, it's it's a possibility. It's it's an option. Yeah. Um, obviously, a fight like that for me of that magnitude, where you can sell tons of pay-per-views, has to happen in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, yes, the money is great in Saudi, but then you lose the pay-per-view uh, action here in the states. So. We have to just weigh in our options and see what's best for Ryan's career, for that fight, for Haney, and uh, for boxing. And what happened with the whole Teofimo Lopez offer? I know that he said that he rejected it. He felt it was lowballing him. Yeah. Um, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, no, and, and this is actually the first time that I will respond to it. Um, we never made an offer to Teofimo. Uh, we just never did. We would never lowball, we would never disrespect Teofimo and offer him 1.5. That's ridiculous. And I know that's not coming from us. Look, I love Teofimo. I love his father. His father's amazing. Uh, you know, and another guy that you know loves to talk and then <laughs> it, it's just it's entertaining, yeah, yeah. and and it's it's boxing, and we love it. But just so they know, and everybody knows, I never ever will dis- disrespect Teofimo and offer him 1.5 million to fight Ryan Garcia. It's it's uh, it's literally bullshit. Good to, to know that side yeah. of, the, of the story because that was obviously the sure. news that was circulating. Yeah. Right. It was circulating, but uh, yeah, we never made that offer okay. ever. Okay. Um, lastly, uh, I, I heard that Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather okay. are doing an exhibition. So they're going to be fighting. What do you think of I that? I heard about that, yeah. I, I mean, look. <laughs> look. Um, more power to them, I guess, if they want to step in the ring and, and they make money, great. But, yeah, that's, that's, it, that's all it is. It's, it's, it's a money grab. Yeah. I mean, I would be silly to say, well, I would never do that because it's, you know, I'm not fighting a real fight. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, giving the fight fans, you know, the best of me. And I'm just trying to make money. Um, yeah, more power to them, I guess. You know, if people are going to buy it here and, you know, and, 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 and support it, then it's great. I mean, it's more, you know, more visibility and more eyeballs to the, to the sport of boxing. And that's what it's all about for me as a promoter. So, but as a fighter, uh, I don't really agree with it. Do you still have the itch, though? Because I know at one point, remember, yeah. you were talking about I having did. an exhibition yourself. Yeah. I had an itch. I had an itch. Um, I had an itch. And I was gonna fight, um, Jesus, Fedor, I believe, or yeah, some some Fedor, guy, yeah. some guy, yeah. yeah, in the MMA. Mm-hmm. I got COVID the week of the fight, and luckily I did because <laughs> when I saw him knock out Evander Holyfield, I was like, holy shit, that could have been me. <laughs> but again, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad it didn't happen. I'm glad I got COVID. Actually, it's weird to say, but. Um, things happen for a reason. I'm fine. So that is where completely I'm at. off that you would never do. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no exhibitions for Oscar De La Hoya. Zero. No exhibitions. <laughs> Not even if the Saudis offered me uh, tons of money, I would never do it. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. As you. always, um, all the best to you and the team and moving nice. forward in 2024. Yeah. Any final words? Yeah, final words. Just uh, look, um, Virgil Ortiz is, is coming after everybody. 
now that he's uh, healthy 100%, now that he's focused, I see him hungrier. I see him just like, just wanting to make up the time, the lost time that he had, um, uh, recuperating and uh, not fighting. I think that he's gonna come after everybody. And I believe that Virgil will be the world champion, um, maybe undisputed world champion at 154 pounds by the end of this year. Okay. Well, I hope to see all of that happen. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we can get some, some news in terms of what's next for Ryan Garcia. Are you aiming for uh, March, April? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we're going to start negotiations okay. uh, right after Virgil. We want to okay. give all the attention to Virgil this yeah. fight here. And um, we'll start negotiations right after. And uh, we're hopefully gunning for March, early April. Um, Haney's the guy. I think, uh, I think you know, I received uh, strict information and, 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 uh, and, 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 you know, my, my orders from Ryan to go after Haney. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate thank it you. as you always. Bye, Fi fans. We need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.